when Star Wars ruled the world. With Empire, there was this great challenge. We were keeping many secrets about the film. And I thought that if we pull it off, it's going to be even better than the first one. <laughs> Escape. Don't make me destroy you. Urban Kirshner brought me aside and said, look, you're going to know this, George knows this, and I know this. You can't tell anybody, but here's what the real story is. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. the great all-time shockers in movies. Wait, 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 what? I am your father. Darth Vader is Luke's father? That's not true. That's impossible. It was very sort of Greek. What a way to send a nine-year-old out into the world. In 80, when Empire came out, there was a big rush from the, from the press again. There was now something to keep up, a reputation that you had to outdo. I thought, how are we going to top Dad Vader? We had to make a movie that was equally as good, uh, if not better, to continue the story. And when we were doing Return of the Jedi, we already knew how successful the other films had been. From the very beginning, uh, they had safely guarded the story so that it didn't leak out beforehand. The fans would show up and start scavenging, looking for anything that might be cool, a sh you know, ship or a piece of a ship or whatever it would be. So they began doing uh, Jedi under mock titles. They came up with the idea of Blue Harvest horror beyond imagination. It was like being in a secret club. Everybody really knew, wink, wink, what it really was. Return of the Jedi was, I think, the first time I ran into costumed uh, fans. And I remember all the lines and the craziness around it. I went to see Return of the Jedi at the Middletown Multiplex. It was packed. <laughs> Look, Jabba, I was just on my way to pay you back, and I got a little sidetracked. It's not my fault. <laughs> Jabba the Hutt was a powerful sort of like warlord. First time I saw Jabba in Return of the Jedi was very, very cool, and it was just kind of like Yoda taken to the next level, where it's just like instead of a little puppet, here's a massive puppet. Well, when I first saw Jabba the Hutt, it was just motionless. But then with the remote control of the eyes from someone outside, a couple of people inside doing the tail and all the goo. And he was horrific, and the voice was wonderful. We have powerful friends. You're going to regret this. Jabba the Hutt um, spoke at ease, which is basically this reworked Indian language that had a very powerful sound to it. And we added a lot of other sounds, like my wife's uh, cheese casserole. Oh. We were really shocked to see Carrie's slave outfit. Because it was. It was really sexy. She was hot. Because it was a metal bathing suit, it didn't adhere to the skin when you laid down. So if there was anyone back here, he could see all the way to Florida. I would stand behind Jabba for days on end, gazing occasionally down at Carrie. It didn't do a lot for 3PO, but as we know, he's not really into that kind of thing. When I think back on Star Wars and George Lucas's accomplishments, I think that he's to be lauded and praised for, for creating a series of characters that are unique and memorable. He walks, you know, they were just a little too cuddly for my taste. As a kid, I was a huge fan of the movies. So you can imagine at 11 years old, I was very lucky to get this scene with Carrie Fisher. She used to be there with chocolate milk and cookies. She was very, very caring like that. She sort of mothered me. It was so hot. We shot in the summer, and they were fainting. The Ewoks were always falling over. And if you fell over, you, you couldn't get up again. 
because you were like a ball of rubber and fur. I thought the Ewoks were cute. How these little furry creatures in their primitive ways could uh, topple an empire. It all comes together in this final battle right here. This crucial lightsaber battle is what everything is all about. I had a feeling that, you know, Luke Skywalker was going to win out in the end. But I was interested to see if Darth Vader was going to die. The character had reached almost a mythical proportion of, of what is underneath there. This dude who's got this black man's voice and this black man's appearance, you know, is a crusty old white man underneath when they rip off that helmet, and it's just kind of disappointing. And it didn't, I don't think, had a very successful ending with a teddy bear picnic. Now, I got to hug Harrison Ford's leg. Uh, which uh, makes women jealous. I think after that, there was, there's nothing more to say. We loved the movie. We were totally blown away by it. And I remember feeling some sort of sense of completion, like, well, I could die now, because I've seen all three of these movies. This is the only thing I really needed to do in life. You know, it's the, like being a senior in high school clearing out your locker because all written all over it was the end coming up all spaced out i was glad that it was wrapping up because i couldn't devote much more of my masculinity or my dignity to, to star wars and hope to ever get laid people say well what about fans are they the question is always are they geeky i never anticipated having to remember what model of spacecraft I flew to Dagobah. There was a person who legal name was Luke Skywalker. Now, that's worrisome. Next on When Star Wars Ruled the World.